Parshas Devarim. We just had an earthquake, it looks like. Okay, it caught the camera. Parshas Devarim. Tov Shinayin Dalet. Shabbos Chazoy. I want to welcome everybody to the once a year shir that we give here and out to lunch. And it seems like the years just fly by. When I was driving up here and I saw the crowd with all the cars outside and everything, and Mamish remembered like yesterday, last year, and the year before. But hopefully this is the last Tisha B'Av in Gullus. So I'm already looking for a place in Gula to have uh, out to lunch. I don't know what we'll call it exactly. We'll try to think of a catchy name. We have our eyes on a few different places, one in Gula, one downtown. We might have a few different locations, but that's where it will be. Uh, next year, Amir Tzashem. Or even this year. If we get there before Tisha B'Av, we'll have another Shia there. This week, we begin, believe it or not, we begin the final Seder of the Torah. As we mentioned last week, that uh, Rosh Hashanah is around the corner. And we, uh, it's been mentioned, I heard this week, that Shloshim Yoim Koydem Achag, so we're not 30 days before Rosh Hashanah, but we are less than 30 days before Tekiah Shoifer. As scary as it sounds, it's reality. We're here, and we're beginning the last Seder of the Torah, Sefer Devarim, which we also know is referred to as Mishnah Torah. And what is discussed at length during the Seder Devarim, we find many, many different inyanim of Avodah Hashem. You look through the whole Seder Devarim, Parshat Devarim, Rashchana, and Akev, goes right through the entire Seder Devarim, the mitzvah, Uvoy Sidbak, which is, we've said many times from the Nisiva Shalom, that all 613 mitzvahs lead up to that mitzvah of Uvoy Sidbak, tremendous mitzvah of Dvekus Bashem. Yiras Hashem, we find in Seder Devarim, Ava Hashem, the Halachto Bidrachov, all these unbelievable lessons and the way that a Yid is supposed to lead his life are found in Seder Devarim. Of course, next week, in Mertz Hashem, we're going to lane the Aser Sadibrois, Aser Sadibrois in Parshas Vers Chanan. And we know the week after that, we're going to lane the Parsha of Shema, which is a Yesoid of Yadus, of the Mekor of Devekus Bashem for every Yid. All these things are now coming up the next few weeks. It's brought down in Tzvarim, Siva Shalom brings it down from a few different Tzvarim, that the Taryag mitzvahs are all preparations for this one mitzvah of the Ahavta Es Hashem The mitzvah of Avas Hashem, which ultimately leads us to the, to the ultimate Dvekus Hashem, but all the mitzvahs lead us up to this tremendous Madrega of Avas Hashem. See, the Shalom says that this might also explain to us why we wait until Devarim to mention all these important inyanim. We just listed off the vital parts of the life of every year. Avas Hashem, Yeres Hashem, these are things when we talk about it and we think about it, we realize how, how what lofty, what high madregas these are. So why would we wait until the last Chumash in the Torah, until Devarim? Siva Shalom says, this is an explanation. It's all leading up. Everything that we have in the Torah till now is leading up to Avas Hashem. It's leading up to this mitzvah of Avas Hashem. So we had to wait for everything because everything is just a way, a way to get here. And everything here is a preparation for the mitzvah of the Ahavta, which we're going to read in two weeks. We do need to explain, though, why Mishnah Torah beginning of this week's Parsha, it begins with things that Moshe Rabbeinu said to Klal Yisrael to rebuke Klal Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu at the beginning of our Parsha, right at the beginning, Moshe Rabbeinu is giving Musr to Klal Yisrael and he's telling them about negative, about things that they did during the Midbar. And Moshe Rabbeinu begins the Vorim by saying, saying Musr. So we just said what unbelievable hush of the things are in Parshas Devarim and all these mitzvahs. So why don't we at least, at least begin the Chumash with something positive? At least begin with one of the highlights of Chumash Devarim. No, we begin Parshas Devarim, Elah Devarim, we right away go into Musr. We right away go into the things that Moshe Rabbeinu tells Klal Yisrael, this is what you did wrong, this is what you have to fix up. So the Tzim Shalom says on this that this explains the dictum that we've spoken about many times 
of Sur Meira and then Asei Toiv. A lot of times you have people, they want to do good things, you want to do, you want to do a lot of mitzvahs, you want to do, but a person first has to refrain from Ra. Reishas Chochma Yiras Hashem. Yiras Hashem, we know, is the part of a person's life that you look, you, introspection, where you look at some of the negative things you might be doing and you straighten them out. So although Avas Hashem is a greater Madrega, but you, the road to Avas Hashem has to begin with Yiras Hashem. You first, the person has to know that they first have to uproot the negative, take an honest look at yourself, uproot the negative, and you have to uproot the negative, Sai Maisim, Sai Adids, and Sai Midas. That's the first thing you have to do. What's wrong? First, let's clean the house, and then you start moving in the new furniture. First thing, Yiras Hashem. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu, says in the Siva Shalom, began Chumash Devarim, giving Musr. He began by telling Klai Yisrael, these are the Chatoim that you did. <coughs> these are the things that you have to straighten out before your Zoycha to any of the high Madregas before we go into Eretz Yisrael. And the Siva Shalom adds also that Yira, there's another special thing about Yira. Yira brings to the Madrega, which he, when Siva Shalom says is extremely, extremely high Madrega, and our Mida, and that's the Mida of Hachna. So every person, I don't know if you actually call it humble, but a person has to be broken. A person has to be, have this Mida of Hachna. The post says in Tehillim, we know that we've mentioned it a few times, Leiv Nishbar Venitke Elikim Loi Sivze. That a heart which is broken, a heart some, that is down, even if a person has done negative things, a person's done Averis, and he's done things wrong, if your heart is broken, then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will never turn away from you. And he won't turn, you'll never be lost from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. On the other hand, we find, we learned Masech Tosaita, the Gemara said Masech Tosaita, Daf Hei, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that if someone is haughty, if someone is the opposite, has the opposite need of Achna, if somebody is a Balgaiva, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Ein ani v'hu yechoylen l'adubar. We cannot live together. And it's interesting to note that you do not find this statement from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Basically, you do not find this statement by anything else. Not by, not by Averis Chamurais. Not by other things. But if a person is a Baal Gaiva, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, We, Kaviyochel, and a person cannot coexist together in this world. But with a Balgai, Balgai Baruch Hu says, I'm sorry, we can't coexist. There's a Zoyar, now when we mentioned that uh, Rosh Hashanah is coming, there's a Zoyar, I don't know how many people get to say it, but if you definitely turn the pages, you know, before we get to Kiyah Shoifer, so there's a whole Zoyar there in the Torah, I mean, there's a whole Zoyar there in the Machzer, it's brought down, a Zoyar on the Kiyah Shoifer. And the Zoyar says the following, he says that when it comes to the Din and Shamayim on Rosh Hashanah, so the Satan, the Sitra Achwa, turns to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and he says a Lashen like this, Ploini Ovad Kach. This person, Ploini, did like this. Ploini Ovar Al Kach. Ploini, this person transgressed A, B, C, and D during this year. Zokta Nesiv Shalom, he's Medayik from this Zoyar, that in order for the Satan to be able to latch on to a person. In order for, that, for the satan to have power over a person, there has to first be a plaining. The person has to feel, I'm something. Because if you have achna and you don't feel that you're a plaining, you don't feel that you're something, so you sort of get HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't focus the negative on you. Lev nishbar benitke, if a person is broken, Elikim Laisivza, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will always be there to catch you. So plaining Oh, but if a person considers himself a plenty, if you have yeshus, if you have that you are doing, you feel that you are something, then the satan, that's he's medayik in the zoyar, then that's what it means. Plenty, you consider yourself um, something, then the satan has the ability to latch onto you. We find the same idea by Yerusha's Eretz Yisrael. Mir Hashem, very soon, Mashiach is going to come, we're going to come to Eretz Yisrael. The Shlah says, the Shlah brings down in Parshish Lech Lecha, that the land is called Eretz Canaan, even after Klal Yisrael was Yorish Eretz Yisrael, you still see it referred to as Eretz Canaan. You know why, says the Shlach? 
The Shlo says, because it's an Eretz L'Nichnoim. It's an Eretz. Eretz Yisrael is a land that's made for people that have hachna, but people that are humble, but people that are broken. Bale Gaiva, people that feel that they are something or they are it, those people cannot make it in Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is meant for one who is broken and humble. As we, we've also mentioned in the past, we'll discuss a little bit uh, and off with an Indian of Tisha B'av coming up in a few days, and we're still in Golas. We brought down from the Shalom a few times that the four Goliaths that were in the history of Kalal Yisrael are referred to at the outset of the Torah. The Torah says, So there are Swarm, the Swarm are Medayik, that these four Lashonis, what's referred to in these four Lashonis, are the four Goliaths that Kalal Yisrael lived through. And the last one, Golas Edoim, is referred to as Alpanei Tehoim. Alpanei Tehoim, when you think of the Tehoim, when you learn about the Tehoim, what does it mean? Something that it's see- seemingly, it's a bottomless and endless Golas. It's almost 2,000 years. You know what 2,000 years is compared to the other Goliaths that we had? It's a mind, it's unbelievable, it's an eternity. And this Golas is referred to Alpanei Tehoim. It's a fract in the Shalom here. Why would we mention the Aretz Hoysa Soyu, Vavoyu, Vachoysha Hapanei Sahaim before we mention anything else in the Torah? We start off the Torah, but let the Torah tell you first some other things. Let, we, we haven't done an Avera yet. We're talking about Golos, we're talking about being sent out of Eretz Yisrael. The Torah just, just began talking. Why are we discussing Golos? Why are we discussing getting Chatz Vashom, the future where we were already pushed out of Eretz Yisrael? So it's a beautiful Yisoyed brought down here, and it's something for us to remember, a lesson for life, and definitely a lesson for coming up to this Tisha B'Av. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is telling us, right at the beginning of the Torah, HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us that this is the way back. It's going to happen, that we're going to be out of Eretz Yisrael, and we're not going to have a Beis HaMikdash, and we're going to be wandering, whether it's the first, second, third, or this long, fourth Golos. HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells us right away, that Golos is the way back. You know why Golos is the way back? Because Golos makes a person humble. No matter how high we think in Golos, unfortunately, we see it today also. We can think we're high, and we live in Eretz Yisrael, and everybody has everything, and they have money, and houses, and everything, and in one second, the entire world is falling apart. Look what's going on around us. The entire world is coming down, and every place in Europe, and Eretz Yisrael, everybody thought everywhere was secure. Nothing's secure. Everything Everything is just mamish on chaste Hashem that we're able to exist. Because Baruch Hu is telling us at the beginning that golos, we have to use the golos as long as we're here to understand that we need this meat of hachna. It's not us. We don't exist. We only exist but for the good grace of the chesed of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So Maishu Rabbeinu began the Torah with Teichacha. Maishu Rabbeinu began by telling us, Leiv Nishbar, you have to break yourself. You have to understand that, that we're in Golos for a reason. We still haven't gotten over the Sinas Chinam. We're in Golos because of the same reason we left Golos. We have to think about it and we have to know that these Shataka be the last days of Golos. Concentrate and hopefully soon we'll all meet each other in Eretz Yisrael.